Every company in the world needs someone to track their budgets and costs. I have done this job in five different companies now and it's been completely different five different times. There's always just like the famous triangle like uh, cost, time and quality and, and you're all fighting for your bit of the triangle. It's finding that balance along the way. There's no one I sit anywhere near that I don't speak to every single day. So if you're not comfortable in that kind of putting yourself out there and speaking to people, it could be difficult. Obviously a university degree at this point helps pretty much everyone. It does kind of set you out. But you definitely don't need to go and spend four years at uni if that's not what you choose to do. I would also suggest potentially looking into... Hi, my name is Callum Fotheringham. I'm a cost engineer for Global ENC and I am educating the next generation. It's a lot of things, to be honest. It's essentially like cost tracking, cost maintenance, forecasting. It's just interacting with everyone. If you think of it like, there's always, there's like the famous triangle, like uh, cost, time and quality. And essentially like I have the cost bit, the planner has the time bit and the project manager has like the quality bit and, and you're all fighting for your bit of the triangle really, you know what I mean? So in a perfect world, in a harmony, you know, somewhere in the middle, everyone's happy. As a cost engineer, the more day-to-day -day business probably involves a lot more like spreadsheets and numbers. I have done this job in five different companies now and it's been completely different five different times. The bits that you'll be asked to track will be different and you'll use different softwares that each company uses to do their cost tracking. Normally it's always backed up by Excel, like the program of the future, but it essentially just comes down to cost tracking, but in many different ways you could be front end, you could be on a project that's starting next year and you could be setting up budgets, you could be right in the thick of it for a project that's finishing and they're tidying up budgets, you could be in a more commercial role and you're just looking at predictive scenarios and you're trying to think where you could save money. It varies day to day. Usually the engineers will provide like a CTR which is a cost time resource breakdown and that'll have all the elements of the job, you'll have a labor breakdown of structural engineer 50 hours and you'll have your procurement breakdown which could be electrical materials 50k etc and then your job is to kind of take that and then apply what we would call like charge out rates and make sure that commercially that makes sense because they just put in the hours they need to do the job but they don't understand the background of like who gets paid what how much they're charged out how much money we're going to make on that job and then you'll have to do a scenario case like is this job actually worth pursuing for us, do we actually make money on this? Because different elements of it could be too expensive, it could be too long, it could take too many resources away from the business that we can't dedicate to that project, so then we're gonna have to book overtime, so therefore this project now only makes 5% and it's not worth pursuing. The most useful skills I would say to have in this role, and maybe it's not that obvious, is probably personal skills and team building skills because as much as your job at the end of the day is the cost tracking element, you need to do that with a lot of other people. You can't just sit at your desk, track the budgets and stay quiet and not say anything. If something's wrong, you need to find out from X why it's wrong. And if something's going really well, then you need to tell why it's gone really well. You don't just work on yourself, you interact with finance because you've got commercial elements with pay and charges and you've got invoicing and you've got the project team itself. And it's not just a solo thing, you've done something with someone else and you've gotten there together. That, that's a huge thing for me. There is obviously a solo aspect to it where you're responsible for your part of that project. So you do still have that I did this, I accomplished that, but it's also a we did this and we accomplished that. And at the end of the day, I don't do this job because I fell in love with Excel at the age of 13. It, it is that team building part of it that keeps making me come back every Monday. And, and that part is what drives me on the most. There's no one I sit anywhere near that I don't speak to every single day. So if you're not comfortable in that kind of putting yourself out there and speaking to people, it could be difficult. Attention to detail is also a really important one. Again, you're working with a lot of cost tracking and across so many things and many different spreadsheets and different places all this information can come from. And it's very easy to miss a number, slip a number, just little things like that, but that can really damage the business, obviously, when it comes to the cost parts. And I think thirdly, it does help if you have uh, a good understanding of, of like maths or an interest in numbers in a way because that is kind of where you're working on and if you can use that in a critical way and, and come up with different formulas and different things that help make your job easier it's probably a really handy skill to have. 
There's not really a strict set of qualifications. I myself, I've been through uni and I've got a bachelor's degree. I would say it is possible to get into this field without a university degree. You can come here through high school or college if you feel there's many ways to get into this. You might not necessarily start with a title that says cost engineer, but you might start as project administrator and it's very easy to transition yourself through. It has the same basic fundamentals to it. You're managing the same aspects on smaller scales and maybe not as accountable for it, but you definitely don't need to go and spend four years at uni if that's not what you choose to do. If you were gonna pursue that route, obviously a university degree at this point helps pretty much everyone. It does kind of set you out. I would also suggest potentially looking into ECITB, like planning and cost tracking courses. There's a couple of really good like two day, three day courses that you could go on. Some of those things that you can really spell out like the basics for what you need to have day one, but it really is a lot of learning on the job. Nothing about what I do is rocket science. I didn't need to go and do three years of physics, but you learn a lot day to day from the people around you. It's really important that we have resources like this. When, when I left school and went into uni, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing and do at the end of it. And I don't think a lot of people do. I think jobs out there is limitless. And I certainly didn't know this role existed until I was in it for the first time. And after being in it, I wish I knew it existed five years before I did because I probably could have tailored my degree more to suit where I wanted to go in the end. I would really encourage everyone to try and adapt and use as many resources as they can find because there is not just one thing. And as much as you grow up thinking, I'm going to be a footballer or a fireman or an engineer. It, it's not just like that. There's lots of ways you can take that same skill set that you thought it was going to be for this one thing. And it turns out there's hundreds of jobs that apply that same useful knowledge and it's just called different things. In terms of career opportunities for roles like this, you most likely will start in some kind of cost engineer role and where you go from there is really up to you. There's probably three main pathways. You go with more of a project controls lead into business services role. You can go a financial, commercial kind of coordinator, or you can go into business development and business development directors and stuff like that. And those three roles are quite different, but they share a same core skill set. So if you take your knowledge from this kind of role and you apply it, it's up to you where you want to go from there. This role can be done across as any industries, renewables, oil and gas, construction, information, anything really. Every company in the world needs someone to track their budgets and costs at some point.